So in this lesson, we're going to start getting some practical experience in actually creating hypercubes. What we're going to do is create our first hypercube using the create cube method. And then we're going to return the data from that hypercube onto our browser window. So I've got the dev hub open to start with. And also we can take a look at the create cube method. And this is the method in click that we use to create hypercubes. So you can see that the this method takes two parameters. So a Q hypercube def, which is the definition of our hypercube. So that's where we will include information around the initial data fetch, an array of dimensions, measures, and some other information around the data that we want to extract from the engine. The second parameter is a callback. So we're going to use that callback to actually access the data that we are defining in that first parameter. And we can actually either use a callback or a promise to retrieve this data. And in this lesson, we'll be going through both examples. And here we have uh, an example. We've got our app.createCube. And in that second parameter, here, the example, they're executing a function with a reply containing this data. So you can put the function directly in here, or you can just define a function name and then call it externally. So you have a few different options of how to actually retrieve that data once it's been defined. So let's just build our own example. So let's go to the dev hub and create a new mashup. And let's just call this hypercubes. I'm just going to choose the basic mashup template. So I'm going to open a new Visual Studio. And I'm just going to navigate to the folder containing these files. And then we can start to, to edit them. So I'm just on another screen now. I've got it up. And I'm just going to our click sense extensions folder and then into this hypercube document and I'll drag it up onto the screen so you can see it. So yeah, this will be in your click sense extensions folder um, with our other mashups that, that we've been creating during this course. And what I'll also do is just open this into a new browser window and we can bring up the console okay so I'm going to delete these placeholders I'm going to create a new div so what we want to do we're going to create a hypercube and just render that data in a div so we can create a div we're going to call this a class of KPI object. And let's then go to hypercubes.js. So by now you'll have a good understanding of this initial boilerplate code and what it's doing. Um, so let's go ahead and create our hypercube. So we do need to access an application. Let me just check which applications we have available to load. So let's go back to the hub and close this. And we've got this temp application, which just contains our example auto generated data model. And we use this in our previous section. So I'm just going to reuse this um, again. So I will leave the QVF attached to this lesson in case you are starting this section afresh. Um, so you can just download and, and use that. So this is temp.qvf. So we need to set var app to equal click dot open app. And we can open temp.qvf. And we've got a config defined 
like so. And then we can actually create our hypercube. So app dot create cube. And this is where we first enter our Q hypercube def, so the definition for our hypercube. And we'll start with our initial data fetch. So Q initial data fetch. So all of our hypercubes that we create, you need to set an initial data fetch. So you, so you need to define the maximum set of rows and columns that you're loading from the click engine. So if you remember in our last lesson, we talked about how you can imagine the hypercube as being just an extraction of data in terms of a table extracted from the engine. Well, you need to set a maximum size for that table. Now we are limited in our hypercube extraction to 10,000 cells. So that is a combination of both rows and columns. In this example, we're just going to create a very simple hypercube. And I'm actually just going to extract one cell from the engine. So I'm going to set, set Q height to one and Q width to one. So it's just a single cell, height of one, width of one, and that's going to contain our KPI object, KPI values. So once you've set our initial data fetch, we need to set some dimensions. So Q dimensions, and I'm just going to leave this blank for now. So this is just going to be an empty array of data. So we didn't need any dimensions currently. Um, we're just going to create a simple KPI, um, which is the reason why we don't really need any dimensions. And we can set some measures, so Q measures. And then we need Q def for our measure definition. And we're going to set Q def to sum of expression one, which I'm just taking from our application. So expression one is a valid measure in our data model. So we can just sum that up. So all we're doing here is just creating JavaScript object. So once this is created, we can start accessing the information contained in this object, just like we do with, with the previous objects that we've dealt with in the course. So just think of it like that. And we've dealt with objects many times over many different examples. And this is no different. You're just setting a definition for our hypercube. And that is just going to return a object, a JavaScript object, and we can then access the data. Okay, so that was the first parameter. And the second parameter is a callback. So we have a couple of options here. We can actually just create a function um, and we can create a function name. Maybe we'll call it KPI object. And then we can access that data by passing the reply and app to that function. I'm just gonna console log the reply. So we've defined a hypercube. We're going to use KPI object callback. And then this is our callback function. And we're just going to console log the reply. So let's have a look. Let's do a hard reload. And there we have in our hyper, uh, there we have in our console, the click hypercube. So this is our very first hypercube that we have created. So let's have a little look into this object um, and take a look at where is the, the data set uh, that we need to access. So if we expand Q hypercube, and then we can have a look in Q data pages, and this contains one array currently, and then in Q matrix, We've got an array of one. And then here is our data that we're extracting from the engine. So it's just one array. There's no dimension. It's just one measure. And this is that measure value, 46125. And if we just very quickly navigate to our app, 
we can actually see that in the application and just get a, a visual representation of, of what it is we are actually creating. So I'm going to create a new sheet. Just going to drag on a KPI, add a measure, and in our hypercube, we're just summing expression one. And I can just change this to number 246125. And 246125, you can see that is the, that is the set of data that we are extracting from the engine. Okay, nice, so hopefully that's clear. So now what we can do is get to this bit of data. Um, so we're gonna to have to navigate through our object and return this into the console. And by when we do this, I'm gonna actually make a slight change here. So you can see I'm using a callback, but instead of using a callback, I'm actually gonna change this to a promise, just to show you a different way of accessing this data. So outside of our, doc, our create cube function, we can add a dot then, and then we can create a function containing that reply. And if we console log reply and refresh, we should see exactly the same output. That's what is expected. And we actually need to navigate. You can see this is kind of a level up from our callback. Um, but if we go and just console log reply dot layout, and this is our hypercube, so in layout. So then we got our Q hypercube and all of the information that we just previously accessed um, using a callback. Okay, so let's navigate into this object. So dot Q hypercube, Q data pages zero because it is our just an array of one and then q matrix um, zero zero and then uh, we've got our q num or q text uh, to derive that value so let's remove this console log and i'm going to set a variable called data to equal reply dot layout dot Q hypercube. Now take a lot of care with the syntax as you're typing this out. Um, it's very easy to make a, a mistake with a lowercase or uppercase. So just pay attention to, to the exact convention. So we've got a capital H for hyper, capital C for cube, Q data pages. So it is all camel cased. Q data pages contains one array can access by zero dot Q matrix and then two arrays here dot Q num and we can console log data and see if that's working as expected and then we got this number two four six one two five which is nice and we can also now just append this to the div that we created. So let's access using jQuery, which we know is automatically loaded with our click APIs. So dot KPI object, dot HTML data, and we can just assign that to our div. And then you can see at the top here, it is a bit small. So maybe I'll just make that a bit bigger. So let's add some CSS dot KPI object. We can set the font size maybe to 30 pixels. And there we go. Nice and big. So now we've got two, four, six, one, two, five. Let's actually make that even bigger. So you guys can all see that. So 24615 now returning to our page. So that's all for this lesson. So what we've done is we've had our first practical experience 
in creating a hypercube and then returning the results um, both to the console and actually rendering that um, on our mashup web page. In the next lesson, we're going to take it a little bit further. And instead of just returning a KPI object, we're actually going to create a table of data. So this is going to be a simple HTML table returning, re returning results from our hypercube.